We all know that we share the planet with a wide variety of creatures. No one knows that better, however, than the people who live and work in the forest on a day-to-day -day basis. Whether it's improving stream beds for fish habitat, leaving snags for birds and green up strips for game, or creating man-made ponds and springs, Oregon tree farmers do their part to ensure that wildlife will prosper on their lands. The Bantail Pigeon Project is actually registered with the, uh, the Conservancy Registry uh, for a, a special project. And recently we've been working with Dr. Todd Sanders from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in a migratory birds uh, project uh, to develop specifically a mineral spring. Mm -hmm. Below the garden is about a, an acre of uh, brush land. Actually, it had been harvested before we got the place and it has uh, choke cherry and cascara berries, which the uh, bantails prefer. Now they've already finished feeding on that. Most of the bantails are now migrating down to California. But uh, in about late August, mid-August, late August, the bantails are, they literally hang upside down eating the uh, cascara berries and the choke cherries. It's quite interesting. And that's the time they also need the salt water from the mineral spring. So next year we'll be in, you know, should have it all set up for them to have uh, minerals right here. One important thing on the feeders and even the uh, water source since they're artificial, they need to be clean. So each time we redo the feeder, we bleach clean it to, for disease prevention and also uh, pressure wash the, uh, the trough to make sure that it doesn't have a disease problem. And we have quite a quantity of wildlife here, deer, elk, um, we do have eagles that nest here. We do have some ospreys on the ranch that nest here. And you notice the trees are standing out by themselves. Those are actually kind of pet trees. They had something peculiar about them. You can see the squiggly one there. They made good wildlife habitat trees like the two snags you see. Uh, those weren't merchable, so we left them. Uh, they're a good perch for uh, hawks. Uh, they'll be habitat for uh, uh, woodpeckers and so on. Le leaving the, the snags is for the hawks because it's always a good idea to have something around for the hawks to perch on to keep your rodent population down. Also, I don't like making things too neat. Nature is kind of random, so I like to leave things a little messy. <laughs> We've had uh, large numbers of voles in our hayland, and so we installed raptor poles in the, pot, in the uh, fields. Uh, and those are extensively used by raptors to hunt for mice. We're standing in front of what's known as the greenup strip. It's required by the state of Oregon when uh, timber harvests exceed 120 acres. And this is a mature stand. Um, it's, it's harvestable right now, but next door to it is a young stand of uh, three or four year old trees. On the other side also there's a young stand of three or four year old trees. As I understand it, it's for the uh, movement of game and for cover. Uh, of, of big game animals and, and small game birds um, and so forth have a way to migrate from from other uh, mature stands and developing stands to to others. We tell our logging contractors to uh, work carefully around those uh, wildlife trees so they don't accidentally bump them and knock them down. As you walk around it, it has probably about a hundred different uh, dens and, and uh, holes in it made by the woodpeckers.